All right, so today we're going to continue working on the 30,000 mile maintenance schedule for my 2019 Raptor. Last time we did the engine oil and the spark plugs. This time we're going to be working on both differentials and the transfer case. So here is the completed product for the ARB front differential cover. This is the Ford 8.8 .8 cover. Um, it does fit, but it required some cutting. Uh, so you're going to see that in this video uh, closer towards the end, uh, how I actually got it to fit. I wish that I could have gotten the Spicer one. I, I don't think that would have required any cutting. I'm pretty sure it would have been a direct fit. But after having it on um, back order for four months and trying multiple distributors, it just it didn't end up happening. So I had to purchase the ARB and, and get this installed. Okay, so first thing you want to do is get this on a level surface. I use my garage, and despite the fact that I have an RSI smart cap on it now with some crossbars to mount a rooftop tent on, I was still able to fit it inside of the garage. Um, so once you get it on a level ground, you're going to want to position your drain pan underneath the rear differential. Usually whenever you're doing this, you're going to want to remove the fill plug first just to make sure that you can. Um, I did not end up doing that just because it's fairly new. It's only been on there for 15,000 miles. I was kind of horrified with how much material came out with the fluid and was stuck to the magnetic drain plug. Um, after googling it, it seems like this is a fairly normal thing, uh, but I might end up doing another change within the next 5,000 miles just to make sure that I'm getting all of the uh, all of that material out of there. there there's no wear products inside of the differential so it, it shouldn't be there in the first place um, but we'll see what happens during my next change both the drain and the fill plug use a standard 3 8 inch drive uh, ratchet so you can just use the ratchet itself, you don't have to use any sort of socket or anything, and you can go ahead and pull those out, and you can retighten. Whenever I put in the, the drain plug, I did not use any additional sealant, I just wiped, it, wiped off the threads and then used the thread sealant that was already on there, um, and I haven't run into any leaks over the past 500 miles. gear oil that I ended up using was again the Amsoil Severe Gear 75W90 um, for both the rear and the front differential. They come in these easy packs, but I'm guessing because it was cold, um, or maybe it's just because they suck, the, uh, the interior seal, when you pull the cap off, it took forever to pull those things off. I ended up having to cut them off every single time. So that's annoying, um, but otherwise the, the pack itself works great whenever you're filling everything up. Once you finally uh, get the last of the oil in there, it will start to drip out. Once it's done dripping, put the fill plug back in and tighten it down. Uh, overall for this differential cover, it made it very easy to actually service it and I'm glad that I purchased it. The only thing I'll say is there's no reason to buy the Ford one. Get the Spicer one because the Ford logo ended up peeling off um, within like a month of putting it on there anyway. I was, I was pretty angry about that. Next up for me was the transfer case. There are four 13 millimeter bolts that hold in the skid plate for the transfer case. Pull those out. Make sure that you have everything clear whenever you drop it because a whole bunch of dirt's gonna fall out and you don't wanna get all of your stuff covered in that dirt. Um, first thing again, you remove the fill plug first and then you remove the drain plug and the oil will come right out. put the new oil in, I ended up using just a standard fluid transfer pump that you can buy at AutoZone or O'Reilly's. Um, I, I had it before from servicing the rear differential on my X5M, so I just had to wipe everything off and then uh, make sure it was clean before starting to use it. Before you start pouring any new oil in, make sure that you tighten the, 
drain plug. Uh, again, for this, there was already thread sealant on there, so I just tightened down really well and made sure that it was sealed up. The fluid that I decided to use for this is the Amsoil OE Automatic Transmission Fluid. The website states that it meets all the requirements for the transfer case, that the OE fluid that goes in here, so I decided to use the Amsoil product since, I don't know, I, I guess I just use all Amsoil fluid for some reason now. Um, in order to actually fill it, I ran the hose over top of this cross member and taped it using some duct tape that makes sure that the hose will stay in place while you're pumping the fluid into the transfer case. Once I started pumping from the second bottle, I started thinking about how much fluid actually goes in here because I knew that it wasn't actually to the fill port. It wasn't going to start pouring out. It was an actual amount. The supplement for the 2019 Raptor online is actually for the 2018 for some reason, and it lists 1.5. The one inside of the vehicle lists 1.9, so that's what I went with. Uh, the 1.9 quarts, which came in the 2019 Raptor, which was copywritten in 2019 and came with my actual vehicle. So don't, don't trust the one online. It should be 1.9 quarts. Once you're done filling, double check, tighten everything down, and go ahead and put the skid plate back on there. So finally, probably the only reason why people are watching this, which is the front differential cover and how I got that installed. Again, I ended up going with the ARB one simply because I could not physically get the Spicer one. None of the uh, retailers that I tried to purchase it from had it in stock. The one that allowed me to do it on back order, it was on back order for four months and I still couldn't find any way to to get it. So I ended up just purchasing it. Um, it came with all of the bolts, the, the socket cap bolts. You do need to torque them down. It lists the torque inside of the manual. Um, First thing you got to do is get all the skid plates off. I do recommend getting the front skid plate off as well as this uh, skid plate underneath the steering rack and the front differential. You will need a 13 millimeter socket for the bolts on the front of the front skid plate and a 15 millimeter socket for the bolts on the rear of the front skid plate as well as for some reason I have a 12 and 10 millimeter socket required for uh, this center skid plate that goes underneath the front differential. So there's barely any space to get to the bolts on the front differential. Like I said, you do need to remove the front skid plate. Um, because I don't have the stock intercooler, I have plenty of space to actually sit up underneath the vehicle here and um, to work underneath there. I couldn't imagine doing it without that extra space. Um, there are these uh, 10 millimeter, I believe they're 10, there are there 10 or 8 millimeter bolts that you have to remove to get off this oil filter tray. Uh, that's where you'll drop the oil filter down whenever you're changing the oil. I needed to remove that in order to be able to reach the top bolts on the differential. Um, I did not want to start at the bottom because then I could I could risk leaks. I wanted to make sure that I could actually remove all of the bolts from the top of the differential which is what you're seeing right here. Uh, it is a 13 millimeter socket that you're going to need to use to unbolt these. Um, I didn't want to strip anything out so I, I did do everything by hand. I just pulled them out one at a time. Uh, the difficulty that you're gonna run into, the major difficulty that you're gonna run into with all of this is unscrewing the bolt that is behind the steering uh, column. You can see the steering column coming down into the steering rack on the right hand side of, uh, of this image. And there's a bolt behind there. There's also a little cover, a flap that goes over top. And it's very challenging to get to all of these bolts. Uh, you, you just have to figure it out. You're going to have to work with all of it. If 
I can find a sale link for this uh, low profile socket and wrench combinate or socket and uh, ratchet combination, I'll I'll put it down in the description. It it is a lifesaver. It's actually saved uh, saved me several times just because it you know small areas uh, for various reasons. It, it it's a great thing to have. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for all the shaky video. I did have to shoot a lot of this first person just because I was running into issues with my static camera. Um, and it's just difficult to, to get point of view on a lot of this to, to show things. So there is a lot of shaky video. Hopefully no one throws up. Um, I will try and improve on that in the future. At this point, I was getting pretty tired and felt sorry for myself. You can see the sorrow in my eyes here. Um, actually, I, I was just checking again that static camera to make sure that I could actually get video on it, um, making sure it, it had something and was still turned on um, before I just kept going and kept finishing. So when I got to the last three bolts, I, I moved out of the way, put the drain pan underneath and started to do them very slowly. Uh, I was kind of thinking that all of the oil would just start leaking out and the whole thing would bust open. Uh, turned out that is not what happened. All of these bolts were actually really difficult to get out. That's kind of what took so long in the first place. But that's because the entire thing is just coated in RTV. Uh, the entire it's glued on there there's no thread locker on the bolts but there is a lot of RTV on the bolts which is what was so challenging to get it off um, I use this four inch putty knife to try and open the whole thing up I was trying to hit it with my hand I ended up just grabbing a, a mallet and doing it from the side in order to kind of crack it open and then I started slowly moving down the entire differential cover to to break it open and allow the oil to come out. I was able to get the old pan off without you know too much difficulty. I checked it out. It seemed like it was about the same profile as the new one. The new one's just a little bit thicker. Um, I let all of the oil drain out. I did end up cleaning it with some non-chlorinated brake cleaner also cleaned off the whole diff and I used both uh, the putty knife as well as some high grit sandpaper uh, wet and, uh, and cleaned off the rest of the gasket that was on there. I realized very quickly that I could not actually install the new differential cover without dropping the diff. So there are two bolts that hold it on. There's one directly over top of the differential. I ended up having to use some uh, swivel joints. Uh, I tried to use the impact wrench to get it off. Uh, I couldn't do it, but I was able to do it by hand and then finish it off. These, the second bolt is over here on the left hand side. That one actually wasn't that tight. I was able to just use this 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench to get it off. Uh, but both of them are 18 millimeter um, and they both have semi-captured nuts. The one that's above the differential has a captured nut that'll just fall right out. And then this one has a nut that has an arm on it that allows you to just tighten it down without holding the other side. So that one's not really captured um, quite like the one above the differential is and I'll, I'll show that to you. It did take a, a little bit of maneuvering to get the deferential in kind of like a downward facing position so that I had enough space and I was able to slide the new differential cover on there. Right away I realized that the design of the ARB with the extra strength strengtheners and support on the sides made it to where it would not fit on this differential without cutting. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing. Uh, first I tried just grounding down these lips, again, only on the passenger side. On the driver side, they fit on, they do wrap around the side of the diff and it, it works perfectly fine. It's only on the passenger side 
that you run into these issues. Um, so there are little arms that come down. You need to ground those down at least flush. Th these aren't even necessary. Um, I think ARB puts them on there for, for added strength and rigidity in the, uh, in the differential, but they're not necessary. Once you ground those down, you do also have to cut in on the side. I did, it took me several tries. I, at first I thought that I could just angle it and wedge it in there. Uh, that didn't work. Um, so again, I, I only wanted to cut off as much material as I had to. I ended up just going back and forth, cutting down more and more and more. Um, but, but don't be afraid to get rid of those bumps that stick off the sides completely because I don't, they're not necessary. It won't mess with the gasket. It won't mess with the seal. Um, they're not necessary at all and they're not a part of the Spicer one, which is why I said I, I think that the Spicer one would fit better um, and with no issues. For the gasket, I did go with the lube blocker gasket. It, it's great um, and it's been holding a seal again for the past 500 miles. I've had this on there. Everything's been fine. So after getting the bolts started on the majority of the bolts for this uh, differential cover, I went back, pulled them out, and made sure that they actually had some red Loctite on there uh, to keep everything sealed up. Hopefully I don't have to pull this thing off again since there is a drain plug for the differential cover. So I found out here that because of the steering rack and the steering column, I was not able to tighten that one frustrating bolt. Um, I ended up just bypassing it. I tightened everything else down, um, so, so I made sure that it was safe enough for me to go ahead and put the differential back into place and tighten that in so that I could get to that last bolt finally. So once you finally finish the tedious work of tightening down all those bolts, you can jack up the differential. You will have to kind of use your hands to align everything appropriately and get the bolt inside of there. Do not push the bolt all the way in. Just push it in enough to get uh, inside of that bushing. Um, the captured nut on the back side is a little difficult to get up in there. What I ended up doing was using a magnet on a stick. And this one is, is pretty long. It's at least two feet long because I needed the bottom of the stick to be able to touch the ground and support the weight 
of the captured nut so that I could come in from the other side and push the bolt the rest of the way in there. Um, and you'll see that here. Uh, I had tried to push it up there, but the bolt was in the way, so I had to pull it back out. Once the bolt was out, I could slide it in like you see in this photo, put the handle on the ground, and then push the bolt the rest of the way in and tighten it down. At this point, I was exhausted and dropped the bolt on my face. After I quit feeling sorry for myself, I got the bolt the rest of the way in there, tightened it down, used about the same amount of torque force that I thought I needed on this side. Uh, I went back to the driver's side and torqued that one down the rest of the way just because at that point um, everything was in the correct position for the bushing to be torqued down. Now that I could kind of reach uh, the location for where that last bolt is, I went ahead and tightened that down before going back um, and going over all of the bolts in a crisscross pattern using the torque wrench. I believe that the, the torque value for this was 24 foot-pounds, um, but again, all of the specs are inside of the instruction manual for the ARB diff cover. I definitely don't recommend using swivel joints and adapters whenever you're torquing something down, but I, I couldn't help it with this. It was just really difficult area to get to on this entire diff cover. The ARB diff cover has a magnetic drain plug. It actually has an O-ring on it, so it's not just a thread, thread sealer on there. Um, I, I think that it's awesome that it has an O-ring, but I hate the fact that it is uh, you know on the face and doesn't face downward like the the spicer one does like I still wish I would have had the spicer um, So the fill port I did not use the fill port on the diff cover I used the standard fill port for this differential which is on the side Highly recommend to use that just uh, Just fill it all the way up till it starts draining out, you know same as the as the rear one I definitely could have gotten away with only five quarts of this oil for between the front and the rear. Uh, as soon as I cut open and started pouring some oil from the uh, the final, the sixth um, quart of oil, it just immediately started pouring out. But you know, it was too late. I wanted to make sure that it was full all the way. So that's pretty much it. I put the uh, tray for the fuel filter back in, on there and uh, afterward I double checked underneath to make sure that there was complete clearances. Everything clears. Everything clears the diff completely. The, uh, the steering rack, the oil filter tray, um, all of the wiring, everything completely clears the differential cover. So it works and it fits. Um, and again, this is the final product. Looks fantastic. I mean, you don't, you can kind of see it if you kneel down in front of the truck, but it's it's not for looks. The purpose of this is to make sure that you have a magnetic drain plug and you have a drain plug so that you can actually uh, do those services every 30,000 miles on the front and rear differential. So that's it. Uh, hopefully this helps you if you plan on buying it. Again, I highly recommend that you buy the Spicer one, not the ARB one, so you don't have to have to cut into it. 
But uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you guys. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully sometime this year I'll get the transmission done. Um, but we'll see you then. Thank you.